This is a video on the basics of Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, of course, we'll be activating Premiere Pro. It looks like that, the PR. I have it on my desktop. And there you go. So clicking on Premiere Pro, you'll get a box like this, and you're going to create a new project. It is important to make sure you know where you're saving your stuff. So I'm going to put this under my desktop. And I already have made a folder for you liked. You can always make a new folder on this dialog box right there. I've called this last name, first name, camera movements. Okay. So I'm going to select this area as the area where I'm going to save my project. I'm going to call this Almeida underscore camera movement. So this is for students that filmed the camera movements and uh, what I'm going to do here is very clever. I am going to highlight the area, press Command C. So I've copied the information to the computer's memory. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing when I paste here. And right now I'm going to pick anything right now because there's a really cool feature on Adobe Premiere Pro when you uh, import video footage you can actually tell the sequence to match the, the footage settings so if I picked a standard 48 which is technically um, frame rate that I'm sorry let's go to NTSC it's palettes European standard 720 by 480 it's not even high definition but I can show you how to change that. So it doesn't really matter what you pick, guys. It's okay. Um, I pasted uh, my title. And voila. So it opens up the interface. Now, just quickly, this is like your source bin. There's also the effects controls, which you'll see later. The audio mixer, very helpful if you're doing audio. Your program um, that shows the content on the timeline. This is your timeline or your sequence. Just to let you know, you can actually do more than one sequence. So you can do like different versions of a project. Um, say you're doing a movie and you want to do a movie trailer. Well, you can go, hey, let's make a new sequence. And I can call this trailer. And I'll have two projects that I can work by side by side or multiple. You can put as many as you like, really. And you can still use the same content that I'll show you. So I'm just going back to my camera movements timeline. There's nothing on there. I'm going to bring in my footage. A few ways to do this. You can go File, Import, or press Command-I. And that will open up a dialog box. And in this case, I have a folder ready with video footage. Now, I could just click on the folder and bring the whole folder in. Or I can double-click the folder and pick and select what images I want in there. In this case, I'm just going to select these MOV files, but you could technically bring the whole folder in. Uh, it's up to you. So I'm going to import those images, or sorry, video files into my project. Okay. And in here, if you want it organized, you can have bins or folders, essentially, and uh, organize it that way. Video clips. Okay. I'm going to highlight that, drag it in there, and voila. So I can organize my content. If you're doing big projects, it's nice to have multiple bins so you can organize content. Now, bringing footage into the timeline. You can click and drag, and I'll notice the footage tells you that it is a 1920 by 1080. This is not exactly the same as my sequence, but when you click and drag into the timeline and drop it, say, on video one, a box will pop up, a very good feature. And you always want to ask is, yeah, I want you to change the settings. So now it, this becomes not a 4 to 3, but a 16 to 9 format, which fits um, the footage quite nicely. Okay? Now, I'll just delete that just to show you. Now, when I edit, you want 5 seconds of your best footage. So, double-clicking on it takes you to your source bin. And you can preview the content here. And what you're going to do on your keyboard, the letter I, nothing else but the letter I is for in. So this creates an endpoint. You'll notice that it turns a teal green. If I scrub through, and I'm just using my mouse and clicking and dragging the timeline indicator, and you press O, that would be the time for it to cut out. So O is for out. Now notice it's saying that this clip is seven seconds. So you could pick and choose whether you want to press out there at that point, or you could actually shrink it in. 
And if you do that, you can see that the footage is five and five frames. So it's zero hours, zero minutes, five seconds, and five frames. So I'm almost perfect to um, five seconds. I'm just gonna trim this right over here. I'm gonna press out, five one, one more frame, boom. I'm exactly five minutes. Or sorry, five seconds. I can click and drag this footage into my timeline. Now here on the bar here, I can click and drag it towards the inside and it will zoom in, or you can zoom out over your timeline. And you can see that the hours, minutes, seconds, or frames are indicated here. And as you scrub through, it gives you exactly where you are on the timeline. So let me just back up a bit. Cool. So let's say I do this one more time. Now, another way of doing this, you can drag the whole clip in. But I find this this method a little bit, I don't know, just a bit more extra work. So I'm going to press C for cutting. So essentially, that is the eraser tool that allows you to cut. And if you cut right on the red line, it cuts right there. I'm going to press V, and I can delete this section. I can drag it over, and I can say, all right, let me go to 10 seconds. And you could essentially just drag this over. Or, Command Z, I'll just go back a step, get your cut tool, cut there, V for selection, delete. So you pick and choose what you feel is the most efficient way to trim your footage. So each clip should be five seconds each. Now, whether or not you want to put a transition is up to you. If you go to effects on your effects bin right here, go to uh, video transitions and, you know, say you want to do a cross dissolve where it blends the two images together in between those two frames fades it in. You don't have to do that. It's up to you. If you double click on it, you can actually play their parameters and say, hey, I want you longer or shorter. So if you just wanted to be like 10 frames, it'd be a very quick transition. Okay. So I save my file because it's always a good thing to do while working. I'm going to go to title. I'm going to add graphics to my clips. Okay. So I'm just going to hover over the top of this. And this is a panic shot. So I'm going to go file new title, default still. So keep that in mind. And call this pan. And I press Command A, select that, and press Command C, just so I can not type it over again. Now, here's your uh, Adobe Tyler interface. I'm just going to stretch this out for you. It's like a subsidiary program inside the program. And I'm going to pick a graphic area around here. Just click, and I'm going to press Command V. We're pan. Now you can play around and spend time with picking some presets, and but I'm not going to bother. So I'm going to go Command Z. Um, nice. Maybe I'll, actually I'll type that in capital letters. So I'll go back. Pan. Get my moves tool selection, and you can do really cool things in here as well. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but you can change the color, add a drop shadow if you wanted, um, play with the distance of it. You know, make sure you're happy with what you're doing here because you could essentially um, copy and paste this over and over again. So when you're, once you're done with the text, you can just close this box. And you'll notice on your project bin on the left hand side here that the pen. You can click and drag that clip right over top. And that word pan will s stay there on top of the graphic or above. Now, you could shrink or hide this. You can have the word pan. But ideally, it's OK to have it for the whole duration of the five seconds. OK. Now, here's a little trick. Save you some time. Select the pan, right click if you like, and say duplicate. Rename this and call it whatever your next one is, tilt. For example, Command A, C. I'm going to scrub through and put it over top. And this is my tilt shot. And I'm going to drag it in to show you, but the word pan is still going to show up because it was a duplicate of this. But if you double click, I'll open up the dialog box, and I can type in tilt. And I'll just use capital letters. It's in the same position. I'm going to close it. And boom. Okay. And you can continue doing this, duplicating, pasting it, 
and renaming it, and I'll keep the same parameters that you used the first time, just changing the text for the for the file above. Anyways, you would save your project again. Imagine doing this three more times for your full 25 seconds. I'm going to show you how to export really quickly. File, export, media. Make sure you highlight the air, the sequence you want. Okay, so I don't want this sequence. I want this sequence. It would be highlighted in a golden yellowish color. File, export media. Make sure you know where you're saving it. So click on this. It's going to be inside that folder I created. I'm okay with that. And like anything else, I like using the H.264 format. The computer should automatically pick and choose the the output and this based on the source. And you can even scrub through here just to make sure everything's good. And export it. Queuing is good to have multiple sequences and you want to export. But since we're only doing one, exporting is all you need to do. And that will get your video file and creates uh, an MP4 file on the, in the location that you told it to. So it puts the graphics, the drop shadows, and the editing points all in one. And that is what you can send to YouTube or email to somebody or play off your mobile device, whatever. So it takes a few seconds to render. And once it does, I think a sound pops up and indicates it to you that it's finished. And that's where you can send to Google Drive. OK. So I'm going to go back to my desktop just to show you that. Camera movements. And there is the file. I'll right click and open this up with use QuickTime. I like using VLC for some reason. Just it's the, it's the pylon. I don't know. It's something about the pylon it wants me to use it. So there you go. Okay, there you go. And that's it for today.